Everybody, this is A Rock One Two One, and we are going to be playing a Democracy Three Let's Play. All right, here we're going to click on New Game. Let's get started. And right, I'm playing like the base Democracy um, Three game. Um, I have a Russia mod and a Japan mod installed from uh, last time I played, but I'm not going to play them today. I think instead we're going to go with. I was thinking about doing a U.S. run, but the last time I played the U.S., I liked it on last difficulty, and I just. Oh man, I got caught up in a whole debt crisis and the whole game fell apart. So, I think I want to do something a little bit more softer and neutral. -er. So, I'm going to go with Canada. Um, Canada, you know, dope ass country. Um, you know, hanging out to the north, a population tenth the size of America, big country, good life expectancy, solid genie um, index, you know, GDP is pretty dope. Not too poor, you know, pretty solid, you know, drinks syrup, ha ha ha. Alright, let's begin. Let's see what Canada is up. So, my goal this game is I'm going to be the, yeah, I'll be the Liberal Party. Or, you know what, I'm going to be the Reform Party. You know, I'm going to be, yeah, the Reform Party. Because we're going to reform the government and change a lot and hopefully get reelected. And we're going to go against the Conservatives because, you know, they don't want to change. Um... I'm going to do five-year term, sounds right, in Canada. I don't know. I think that might be less. Like, I think they change it. They change it pretty recently. I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to do no limit. I'm going to switch it actually to two, and that's going to be like a self-imposed exile. I'm only going to stay in office for two terms just because, you know, after a while, there's really nothing to do once you have all the policies you want in um, democracy. So we are a monarchy. We do have a royal family, the British royal family. Australia has compulsory voting. I don't think Canada does, so we're not going to do that. Um, In-game, that means people who don't really care about politics one way or the other won't come out and vote. And um, you can kind of, like, rest on the apathy to not really force people to vote. So if you anger people or get people really excited, they're going to be more incentive to come out to vote. So voting turnout is actually going to be factored into our democracy um earthquakes i think there are earthquakes in canada it makes sense they're in like california and like the west coast so probably in canada and hurricanes i'm just gonna assume yeah why not let them have hurricanes um i'm not gonna mess with any of these sliders because they're set to the game i will raise the difficulty to do 150 because you know why not let's play a bit of a game and let's get started shall we all right play Gerrymandering constituencies, inventing the internet, compiling misleading statistics, preparing sound bites, and posturing on foreign policy. A bunch of other stuff, you know, it's very yeah, cynical game, Democracy 3. So, the big thing we're going to see is we're going to see, like, the state of the country when it comes in, and it's going to be interesting about how we're going to want to tackle it right away. Um, I haven't played a Test Runs Canada, I played an America game to kind of get myself in the zone, and... I said it earlier, I let that fall apart because I let my expenditures go grow too quickly and I didn't let my money, I didn't let my, you know, financial policies come into place to really come to terms. So, yeah, that's what I was talking about. So, welcome to my new job, Prime Minister. Canada's not in a too terrible a position, it looks like, from this situation. Um, our Income $71 billion, our expenditure is $93 billion, that's a sizable difference. Um, our, let me look at these charts, like, our debt's pretty high, debt to GDP ratio is pretty high. Um, our economy's doing alright, we don't have too much debt overall, only about a trillion dollars, and our interest rate's pretty low because we have a good credit rating, but we're gonna need to either get some income or cut some services or figure something out because pretty quickly... If you have a deficit, the interest rate's going to raise. So you're going to have to spend more and more and more on the debt interest, which right now is already $7 billion. It's like 10% of our national incomes on debt, and that's with the one of the lower interest rates. That could very easily become $15 billion when our largest expense if we don't keep an eye on it. So we're going to want to make sure that we have a, I'm going to say an operating surplus for a good chunk of the majority of the game, or beginning of the game. Um, in order to get there, though, we're going to have to mess with all the policies affecting our country. Now, in Democracy 3, the blue policies are kind of more like indicators and actual policies, while the red policies are bad things like homelessness or having an uncompetitive economy. And the white policies are policies, something like the child benefit. And the child benefit is basically the money being given to parents for helping them raise kids. And capitalists don't like that. It's more like the libertarian, any government's bad type of people. 
Um, poor people like it. It improves our equality. Parents like it. Liberals like it. We get more parents because it's easier for parents to have kids, so parents are a bigger part of the electorate. Poor earnings. And we can uh, change the slider about how much money goes to the program. We can see it changes the... Um, the level of effect that different groups get. So if we have no child benefit, parents end up having no, you know, like, level of support. And that's pretty unfortunate because, you know, like, the whole point of having child benefits kind of to get parents on your side. Like, liberals still like you somewhat. And it does end up saving a lot of money because it only costs half a million dollars as opposed to, like, what's it right now? It's like $3 billion up to $6 billion. And then see here, parents really like you. Um, I'm not going to mess with the child benefit right away. It's kind of one of those policies you kind of tinker with when you have a little money to spend, and hopefully we'll have some money to spend. Because the big policy I want to implement right away is a new tax. I want to get, uh, these are new policies, a new carbon tax. So, I think a carbon tax, I don't have enough yet. Yeah, carbon tax is between $1 and $30 billion. I'm hoping I can get at least around $20 billion out of this carbon tax. Uh, I can't afford it right now because it costs 39 political power to implement, and I only have 27. So I am going to probably have to save up. But I think a carbon tax is generally a good way to like stop that early game deficit because it really improves pollution in the environment. So any environmental issues you're going to have over the course of the game, because right now I don't think we have a bad environment. Now we got pollution, which is you know it's costing us something. It's not you know too much, but hurts our tourism, hurts our health. Like it has all these effects and. If we don't be careful, asthma, asthma's already a thing, can become a thing, and that's expensive, and, you know, overall, having a good environment has, like, a lot of, like, trickle-down effects, and it's generally a good policy. So that was, what, 39 um, political capital to spend. Right now, we only have 27. Um, every turn, we get a different amount. Uh, it's 27 for now with the current cabinet. We're probably going to have to change the cabinet. See, it's 2.4% retired trade. Oh, we'll see. We won't... Your cabinet gives different um, levels of political support depending on your level of, you know, your level of whether or not they like you, basically. Like, this guy, he's supported by retired people and trade unionists, and right now, retired people like me, but trade unionists don't. So, if those groups like you and you're popular, like right now we're unpopular, over time, your support gets better. But I think we're going to probably have to purge the cabinet at some point, but now it's not the moment. Now, we're going to want to implement the first policies of the game. And since we only really have um, 27 plus 27 is 54, 54 minus 39 is 15, so we only really have 15 political capital to spend this term. Um, there's some crime issues we need to address, and health. We don't have money for health and crime. All this stuff's going to be expensive. I'm going to focus right away on the economy. So I think the biggest economic go is small business grants for 10. It's like that's $3 billion, which is not insignificant, but it has a pretty significant impact on the GDP, and that's going to be big. So I'm going to go implement that, and I think I get five more um, political capital. You know, I'm just going to sneak in police. I'm just going to raise our police budget, which is a force, double it to a $3 billion seat, but that has such a huge impact on these negative red modifiers, and, you know, getting your law and order on their system, like, once you get your crime set up, like, have some money to deal with crime, like, all these people stop hating you, because they, a lot of the reason people don't like you are these red modifiers, so it's just such a net positive, ah, oh, fuck, I think we might not have enough, because 27 is, we'll see, we'll see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the next turn, and... Let's see how things play out. All right, let's get a look at the new situation. Public smoking ban. So the game, like, every time you do a new turn, they give you, like, a question, a policy question, like, should we ban public smoking? I'm just going to ban public smoking because I think I'm... It's Canada, so I feel like they would, like, do stuff like that, like banning public smoking, and because I, I want to probably mess with the cigarette tax, just, like, eke out some money and then, like, impose, like, improve our health a little bit by getting people to smoke cigarettes less. Like, yeah, I'm just going to ban public smoking. Like, why not? Like, eh. Budget deficit, $25 billion. So we did increase spending last turn, which is going to um, increase our deficit, which is not good in the short term, which is why now we really need to get our cabinet, uh, our tax plan in. We're still not popular, but... Uh, that's really going to stay that way until we kind of let, like, a few policies take in. I'm not really worried about early popularity. So, 40, okay, yeah, we definitely have enough for the tax. Um, 
flat income tax. I don't mess with the flat income tax. It's just like because um, I prefer, you know, the scaled income tax or progressive income tax. Uh, but I do want carbon tax is CO2, carbon tax. Let's see how much narrow we can get. All right, so 38% rate, that is going to cut our pollution a good chunk and cut our GDP uh, a little bit, which is unfortunate. But it is going to make our environment better, and it is going to raise $17 billion, which is going to do muchos. But if we can raise it a little bit more, I said I wanted to get $20 billion. I'm going to do a 45% carbon tax rate. And see, like that doesn't really um, like reset. Like, yeah, that's like... Uh, like you see that GDP is going down. You know, I'm going to stick it at 43, I guess. Yeah, 43%. It's just over $20 billion. Eh, like, it's it's not ideal. Like, I mean, I guess you have to make trade-offs because, like, tax cuts in the GDP, but, like, that money is going to be important for um, dealing with junk. Uh, do I have community policing? Um, community policing is a law and order. Yeah, community policing is a great policy. It only costs one, and it's only a billion dollars. It's relatively cheap. And, ooh, look at that. Antisocial behavior and alcohol abuse, it does wonders in the smacking to that. Cuts in unemployment a little bit, makes more liberals, improves racial tension, decreases crime. It's like all around a good thing, like making the police community work together better. Hopefully, we can knock out alcohol abuse, which is, see, it's expensive. Like, it, it, like hmm. I, I'm also going to want to implement an alcohol tax, I think. Do we have an alcohol tax? 30% if I raised it to... Yeah, it's not going to... It doesn't matter. How call is not... Mm. I might want to implement legalized drugs. You know, Canada's going to legalize pot or whatever. Um, and see if doing that will help me... Um, yeah, we're doing the next turn now. Um, help me implement a drug tax to help eke out some dinero. Because I think right now... I see crimes going down because our policing uh, reforms, which is good because... These are basically, when you're playing democracy, these are the indicators that basically determine whether or not you're going to do well and get reelected. I'd say it's in terms of priority. GDP is highest, and usually a high GDP means low unemployment, low crime, and low poverty, and gives you money for health and education, and health and education helps support GDP. So if we get a good economy, like $6 billion deficit, that's it's still a deficit, but that's like way smaller than it was like if we had not implemented any new policies then oof like we would be at a surplus right now but we don't really like we don't need a surplus like we just need to improve the gdp um is there any question freedom of information yeah freedom of information why not like um i like getting i've never done it but like i like the idea that you can just get like forms or whatever and like telling you how like the government works so freedom of information um Ooh, security. The Church of Christ is not happy with us. Um, okay. So there is something to be said of using all the political capital now and just doing some of the less expensive changes while we don't have any money and while we wait for our economy to grow to catch up. Because we did small business grant or rural development grants. Oh, I'm definitely increasing these, but small business grants gave us, um, like, they're only starting to get implemented. Like, the GDP is going to shoot up. And when the GDP shoots up, the amount of income we get on tax is going to be affected because um, if you look at GDP, it affects the level of tax rates. So the different taxes, corporate tax, income tax, and capital gains tax, and, and sales tax, all get more money when the GDP is higher. So the source of income are going to all shoot up when GDP, you know, gets dope. So right now, I think we're going to, how's our healthcare? Healthcare is pretty, it's Canada, good healthcare. I think, I said I was going to do the um, rural development grant, which I think I am, because that's what, oh, see, that's that's like a quarter million dollars to improve our, like, look at that. That's like such a good policy for us to implement. We get a GDP up, farmers or whatever, like number of farmers isn't too important, but more farmers that like us is important. And overall, equality does improve stuff. Unemployment going down. Look at that cut. Look at the oof. All these Canadians with jobs are going to go to the polls for the um, Reform Party. And poor earnings is also good because poor earnings, like, let poor people buy more stuff, which increases sales tax. And then, like, it, it all plays together. Like, it, it, the game does a pretty good job of tying everything together. Um, 
So that was like a pretty aggressive 18 political capital. I only have eight left. I'm going to see if I can fiddle with any of these problems. Now, it's a rail strike. I think I'm not going to, and affects GDP. I'm not going to touch that right now. Um, alcoholism, $2 billion. Community policing is going to put a dent into that. And then maybe I can, once community policing is in place, I can like reassess how close we are to the threshold because over time this is going to get lower and lower and lower. And if we do something like raising the alcohol tax or, like, reducing unemployment is also going to cut down on alcoholism. So, like, as the economy gets better with these problems, like, basically every, like, running a country with a good economy, it's a lot easier. Um, I think what I am going to do is I'm going to save this eight because next turn I want to completely end the teaching of creationism in schools. And I want to do that because it costs 30 to change. But when you do that, it completely decimates religious membership. And I kind of want to do some social engineering and end, like, the religious membership. Right now, 30% of the population is religious. School prayers, face school subsidies, what the fuck? Oh, I know what we're cutting. Oh, look at this. See, that's what's interesting about Canada. Like, I don't know, like, the laws of Canada. So they have, like, random policies that I wouldn't think, like, maybe it's, like, a French Catholic. So face school subsidies, cancel... See, they're not too expensive, but, it, like, it improves. Yeah, like, this is not something. And eh, it makes education better. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cancel this. 36. Oh, that's expensive to cancel. And school prayer is 39. Fuck. See, this is what I was talking about, like, late game stuff. Like, getting rid of these are going to be good, but I'm going to... I am going to, right now, just stick with teaching creationism as the first step. It's going to piss the religious folks off, and they already don't like me. But one way to deal with that is if there's no religious people in Canada then nobody is going to oppose me from the religious section. So I'm going to, like, basically I'm going to bite the bullet. I want them to hate me. I want them to hate me so much that, that I want to destroy them so their hatred means nothing. Like, see, fuck, religious condemnation. Ugh, that's not good. Our deficit's still around $7 billion. Mm, 23%. Crime's going down and unemployment's going down over time, and our GDP should start to go up. And, like, this stuff's starting to have a trickle effect, I th I'm hoping. Um, let me look at the budget real quick. Okay, so, fuck, GDP's gonna go down. I probably, like, a good rule of thumb is if the relative GDP decreases, the next turn your income's gonna decrease. Because relative GDP means all these taxes are gonna be calculated with a lower um, base GDP. Uncompetitive economy. We, we, fuck, that's, see, that's not good. We want a competitive economy, and that tax rate's probably not gonna help. I am going to start off, I have 30 political capital, which is pretty aggressive. I'm going to go for the creationism evolution because it also, yeah, I'm just going to get the liberals on my side, give me some more liberals and stop the conservatives because right now the liberals, they don't like some of our police policies and some of our immigration stuff and some of our religious practices. So 53%, yeah, we kind of want the liberals to like us. We can get the liberals to like us more. Like, the whole crime situation, crime just needs a general overhaul. Like, we need the whole new sets of policies and new types of crime. Like, we don't want CCD. We just want, like, well-funded prisons, which are not the case right now. Ugh, it's expensive. Um, what I think the move is is to... See, that's free. That's, like, that's why it doesn't matter. Mm. Hey, sorry about that. The uh, thing cut off. Um... Yeah, the only thing I did was I added telecommunications as an initiative, and telecommunications is just like working from home. It was two political capital. It was less than a billion dollars. Um, I'll click on the policy once I get to it. Um, right now, let's return to government and see what the situation is. Anti-social behavior is done, and vigilante mobs are gone. You know, I mean, you hear about those like famous like mobs up in Ottawa and like Calgary and stuff, like Canadians just going around like beating up criminals, but now that's no longer the case, so go us. That's going to be good because these things were just, like, negatively, like, they feed into crime, so with these things gone, the whole crime page is going to be easier, and, like, see, crime overall has been cut drastically, like, it used to be in the red, now it's just in the orange. Um, children's food. Regulate the fat content and nutritional value of food. Um, yeah, I'm going to regulate children's food. Yeah, fuck that, right? 41%. See, that's, like, now we're in fighting range. We're, like... 41% means we have, like, enough popularity to where if we put in some, like, baiting cards, like, baiting policies, we could probably win the next election. 
Maybe I, I wouldn't want to have it now, but like we're we're getting into fighting range, right? Um, human rights society. I'm gonna check on our security in a minute, and not the cabinet yet. The cabinet's doing. The cabinet usually works for like the first like third of the game before like your policies start to catch up because after a bit, um, no wrong button. After a bit, your kind of direction shoots out. Like the direction you go in, like kind of moves away. Like. See economy and welfare and public service, like religious conservative, she's not gonna like me. Um, retired, trading is eh, religious, like it it it'll play out, it'll play out. Religious really hates me. The big threat though right now is here. So these just basically show different groups of people and how upset they are with me. Um, like the green people, conservatives. And right now some people are upset, but not to the point where they're gonna try and assassinate me if they were. They would appear here as his faction. Um, I'm kind of worried about Crusaders of the Lord because I'm going to piss them off. And these factions become nothing if there are no religious members. So if I get the religious percentage down to zero, it won't matter their opinion. Um, you can also fight this by having strong national security um, programs so that the assassinations don't work. But I kind of feel like it's easier just to be like a benevolent, peaceful, like have nobody hate you, like have no enemies instead of be well defended kind of mindset. Um, our deficit's still not doing well. How are, how's the GDP go? Ah, GDP is not doing too hot. What's up with that? What's going on? Carbon tax is still being implemented. Small business grads are coming in. Um, uh, rail strikes not doing too hot. This uncompetitive economy, what's causing this? Corporate tax rate and productivity. Our productivity is kind of low. Um, maternity leave, I'm, I would raise it, but if you do that too soon, like, it creates a corporate issue, um, and I kind of want to have, like, eggs in the, like, you have to line your ducks in a row before you mess with stuff like that, um, do we have a cigarette tax? What's our cigarette tax at? I mentioned earlier I wanted to cut it. Half a million dollars, um, see, like, Canada's economy is not too massive, so, like, random policies like that aren't going to be too decisive when it comes to changing up stuff. Um, technology grants, raise it by six. See, that, like, cuts into religious membership that much more, which is good, and, and unemployment, and improves our technology, which is good because, you know, technology improves a whole bunch of other stuff. This is tech, I think. Yeah, like, tech improves productivity and increases the retired membership, I guess. Maybe that's just because there are fewer jobs. Um, hmm, actually, it's interesting. I wouldn't have, I figured it would have had a more active effect. Okay, what are these? Foreign and tax... Investor tax rates. Oh, yeah, I'm going to want to do that. I am going to increase our tax breaks from, what are we at now, $1.3 billion. You know what, I'm going to throw a nice, give these foreign corporations like a nice $2 billion, you know, give them a good $2 billion. And that's, our patriots aren't going to like us because we're giving money away, but, like, that GDP growth is not insignificant. Um, oh, yeah, I had telecommunicating initiative, which is this policy right here. Um, it's going to make commuters like us more because, and incre decrease the number, though, and because they're, they like them because there are fewer people in traffic. And decreasing the number of commuters is also going to be a policy I kind of want because we also want low car usage. Uh, because car usage, um, it does give us some money. Oh, I don't like toll roads, but it does hurt the environment. And, um, yeah, and the environment's generally something we kind of want to be. I, so I think I'm going to look and see if we have a new policy we can influence. Ooh, the Enterprise Investment Scheme. I'm going to throw that out for another billion dollars. Yeah, give us some GDP, give us some capitalists, give us some self-employed, give us some socialists, or get rid of some socialists. I like socialists generally because they support welfare programs and, like, I believe in having, like, the government work and shit. But right now, we just kind of need some industry and some business, so we're going to give it to the people who actually get stuff done. Um, it's going to hurt our deficit, but right now, my kind of rule of thumb is if we can keep the deficit to under $10 billion, it's not going to be under $10 billion, we'll be pretty good. Um, is there any health food subsidies? See, that's $100 million. That's nothing. But look at that. Cuts into obesity, improves health, and improves for horror earnings. Like, that's that's a good move, because obesity right now, like, it increases the cost of our health care and decreases our health, and health affects productivity and all sorts of other things. So, ah, these subsidized. See, like, Canada has, like, this patchwork policy. Like, I want to... Dr. Strike. What's this Dr. Strike doing? 
I mean, that's not too too important right now. Um, I am going to, let's end the turn, and hopefully we'll be under $10 billion in debt. I mean, worse comes to worse, we are just have a bigger deficit. I got, like, railroaded last time in my America game before this because I let my deficit get too big, and America already started with a pretty big deficit. It's like $1 trillion is income and $1.5 trillion expenses, and I just, like, let that become, like, $1.2 trillion income and then $1.8 trillion expenses, and then you just, like, create a debt crisis and the whole thing falls apart. See, this is what I was worried about. We have our credit rating is downgraded. Triple B from down from A. I'm going to see our GDP is affected. I want to look and see how bad that is. Our GDP really has not been improving. I think it's because all the improvements have been countered by the carbon tax rate. Um, like, there's still other improvements that have yet to, like, trickle in. Yeah, there's definitely some room to grow. But we need to cut in. Why is immigration hurting our economy? Um, immigration negatively affects our GDP, so I guess we could have, like, a more closed Trumpian, like, uh, whatever, 45%. We're doing, I, let's, let's look at the money. What's our, what's our deficit? Is it under $10 billion, or? Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's, like, all, all bad. All bad. See, debt interest is already up to $9 billion. Um, chart, fuck, our economy is not doing too hot. We need to raise taxes, methinks. Me thinks, me thinks. What am I going to raise? Should I raise the income tax? Ugh, no, I don't want to raise the income tax. I don't want to do anything like that. I am going to do the recreational junk food tax. That's not a lot of money. Recreational, that's also not a lot of money. Um, anything to improve the GDP? Like, yeah... All right, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to go for something cheap, like the clean fuel subsidy. This is like a good policy and fuel efficiency. I'm going to do two car policies. So we're going to do car um, clean fuel subsidy, which is going to make motorists like us and environmentalists like us, and it's not going to cost a lot of money. And then I'm going to do the fuel efficiency standards, which is going to, you know, Give motors more money and increase car usage, but also decrease oil demand. So the cars that we do have, like even if we are moving away from a driving, we're going towards that public transportation, it's better cars, the environment still gives like the best of both worlds.